We got three games in one segment coming up. Really? Yep, three games. And one of them involves first talking tennis? Up. Yep, and the first one is, Yeah. I think this is a new one, actually. Yeah. Nick's Tennis Corner. Oh, it's a new one, but it's going to be here to stay, because you know why? Before I even before you even answer the, or ask me the question, getting off the plane from Chicago Sunday, before I even get to baggage claim, guy stops me. He's like, hey, saw you on the flight, just wanted to stop you and thank you. I'm like, yeah, for what? For talking tennis, man. Yeah, I see that on Twitter a lot, too. Yeah, you know why? Because because there is a dearth. It's just me and Mad Dog Russo of people that want to talk tennis on major platforms. All right, go ahead. Uh, yeah, so apparently Win- Wimbledon is going on. Wimbledon is I going on. found that out this morning. Yeah. Pretty wild. They're changing it up now, and they're playing on grass. Okay, Wimbledon's always been on grass, but go ahead. Okay, I thought it was new. But no, um, that's yes, fine. your show, I can't stop you from talking about it. Okay. What would you like to talk about? First of all, this weekend... If you said seen the Kyrgios Tsitsipas match, you would have become a tennis fan. Okay. So Kyrgios is like wildly talented, but incredibly emotional, underachiever is the fact of the matter. Yeah. Tsitsipas has his own issues. Like he takes these long bathroom breaks, which people feel like are really rest breaks. But what do you yeah. do? Like he's like, I gotta go to the bathroom, and then he rests. So Kyrgios was talking mad trash to him. And it got in Tsitsipas' head. And all of a sudden, Tsitsipas is like firing balls into the crowd. Almost <sighs> domed an old lady. Oh, he, wow. And then also on a couple points, instead of trying to like, because in tennis, you obviously like try to paint the corners, hit it where the guy yeah. is. He was just hitting, hitting it, it right, right at, at Kyrgios. <laughs> it was unbelievable. And Kyrgios, nice. Kyrgios won, and it was dope as hell. And then afterwards, Tsitsipas is like, I think he was a bully in high school and just, you know, yeah. all this stuff. But now we are reco- we are on the precipice of what could be an amazing semifinal and then final. So right now, as we're recording, Rafa, Rafa Nadal, we've talked about him. Yeah. The fr- you know, the clay court legend, also the guy with 22 majors. Uh, he's in a dogfight right now in the quarters against Taylor Fritz in America. Kyrgios just won as we're recording the first set in a match he absolutely should win. If they both win, and I believe Rafa hopefully can come back, we have Rafa versus Kyrgios in the semis. Biggest match of Kyrgios' life by a mile. By a mile, and Rafa's banged up. If he wins and he has a chance to win Wimbledon, it changes his career forever. If Rafa wins, and Rafa, after the year that he has had, the idea that he might, at this point in his career, become, I think it's the first guy since Rod Laver to win all four Grand Slams in a calendar year? Because he won the Australian, he won the French. But on the other side of the bracket is Djokovic. And Djokovic has been the best player of the last eight years, even better than Rafa. And so we could get a Rafa Djokovic final or a Kyrgios Djokovic final. Either way, it'll be out of this world. And I know you're not into the tennis. But because I knew we were going to talk about this, I want to just describe to you how utterly dominant these guys have been. So I did some research this morning, some numbers for you, okay? So since 2004, there have been 75 major championships played. Okay. So that's the Australian Open, the French Open, Wimbledon, the U.S. Open. Those are the four tournaments that matter since 2004. There have been 75. This is the 76, the one right now. Djokovic, Federer, and Nadal, the the big three, okay? Those are the guys I've been telling you about. Federer at this point is basically done. Okay. Uh, and Nadal should be done, but he's still somehow killing it. Of those 75 majors, those three guys, before I even give you the number, I'll give you a little context. Prior to those three guys existing, the most majors anyone had ever won was 14. From 04 to right now, there have been 75 majors played. Those three guys have won 61 of them. They have won 61 majors of the last 75. Of the last 75 majors played, there have been five where at least one of them was not in the final. 70 of the 75, at least one of them in the final, and most of them, it's been two of them playing each other. So like Djokovic is, has made 31 major finals, won 20 of them. And six of his 11 losses 
were against Federer and Nadal. Yeah. That, but that's not even as impressive as the other guys. Federer's also 20 majors with 11 losses in the final, 11 second places. But 10 of those losses came to Nadal or Joker. And then Nadal has 22 wins and eight losses. And seven of those came to Federer or, or uh, Djokovic. And we might get it again. We might get Nadal Djokovic again. When Nadal's trying to go for the first C, you know, true Grand Slam, I think since Rod Labor. I know only one guy's done it. It's exciting, man. It's great. High level tennis is great. I know you look dumb, you look stupefied by what I'm saying right now, but the numbers are impossible to understand. So like golf, do they get do they get jackets or do they get like a like a like No, a they Stanley get like so for like second thing? place, let me show you real quick. It's pretty cool for Wimbledon. Wimbledon trophies because the the winner's trophy is unbelievable and the second place trophy is just like a plate so that's what the winner gets that's what second place gets it looks pretty cool it is pretty cool hey. you do get something i like that a lot more than the green jacket the I green jacket honest. is kind of bougie you know it's country club thing yeah no, no no it's great man i want to go to wimbledon so bad one day yeah do you want to i looked it up Jesus. hold on sorry i know there's like eight minutes on tennis but i got it do you want to know what the Wimbledon final tickets are going for right now? People are out here buying the Wimbledon tickets instead of buying a PS5 or something. It's ridiculous. The Wimbledon men's final. What do you think the cheapest ticket is? The cheapest ticket to get in. Well, it's been, I, Give it a guess. Nosebleeds or do they even know they don't? I mean, it's not, it's not like it's not a football stadium. Like, it's, like, yeah, but I'm going to say 1500 bucks. Um, 8,200 euros. So it's like $10,000. The cheapest ticket. If you want to sit next to, oh, that you can't even sit next to the royal box anymore. Who do you think sits in the royal box at Wimbledon? The queen? Oh, yeah. You <laughs> bet your ass. <laughs> yeah. You bet your ass. And if she can't make it, a member of the royal family goes, okay. All right. So we, when people see, he, see, see or hear this, they'll know if Curios or Nadal have won. We are rooting for Curios and Nadal to win. And we are rooting for the winner of Curios and Nadal to beat Djokovic. We're not Djokovic fans. We like Federer. We love Nadal. Kyrgios is a guy you would enjoy rooting for. Forget Djokovic. Not a big Djokovic fan. Okay, that was a solid eight minutes on Wimbledon. I didn't think you could do that. Hey, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button to get more from the show and make sure to click the bell to get notified every time new content drops. Check out full episodes of What's Right wherever you get your podcasts or... Just click the link in the description below.